Hey everybody, welcome to this free edition of our Trader User Group. This is for the trading week ending May 29th, 2020. And just like last week, I am Preston Brent. Thanks for tuning in. The week's theme, as you guys can see, is send in the clowns. Of course, that was our motto last week, but I thought it was appropriate for this week as well. The other thing I want you guys to remember is we do not want our members and especially you guys watching and listening in this weekend to be rat brain traders. We want you to be the red stripe zebra. Basically, we want you to stand out from the herd. Well, looking at the markets this week, um, it's going to be a short session for me because I've got uh, I'm moving to a better ocean view. So um, should be fun this weekend for me, although I hate moving. But if we look at the markets this week, they're in the green, the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, uh, all up. And the Russell still continues to lead the way, all right? Still underwater for the year uh, for the Russell, but uh, continuing to lead the way. Volatility still continuing to come in. We're seeing, you know, the world markets kind of coming around as everybody's starting to open up uh, their markets. We're seeing some strong sector performance. But as I told our members a week ago, or a couple of weeks ago, I think I mentioned here in our, our weekly updates, um, we're seeing some rotation out of technology and into cyclicals, which it does make sense, guys. I mean, if you think about it, uh, for the past two and a half, three months since COVID-19, you know, kind of came to our shores here in the U.S. markets, all we've been hearing about is and listening to and watching on TV and these idiots on TV talking about uh, we got to shut this down, we got to shut that down. So for the longest time, everybody's been talking about shutting things down. Now, um, starting about two weeks ago, we're hearing about how things are starting to open up. So it's a different framework. It's a different sentiment. So as things start to open back up, we're seeing some of this rotation from some of the stocks that were stay at home stocks. You know, we're seeing, you know, some of the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and let's add to it Microsoft. I mean, these guys have outperformed the broad market since this crisis. Um, they, in fact, they've been kind of the largest contributors to the market rebound off these March 23rd lows. Um, five of these stocks, um, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, their market cap is a combined 4.4 trillion. So they've got a huge influence on this market cap weighted S and P 500, right? So, and then you throw Microsoft in there and forget about it. It's just, it's, they've really kind of kept the markets in balance here. But we're, we are seeing some sector rotation, as I've told our members. In cyclicals, as things start to open back up, industrials and financials, these things are coming along really nicely. So we want to stay in track with this. Now, there are some things that can upset the apple cart, as you guys know. Uh, we've got the tensions with China and Hong Kong and with the um, outdoor uh, update that uh, Trump gave on Hong Kong and, and China and what he wants to do. And there's still a lot missing out. But the markets rallied strong at the end of his speech during and at the end of his speech because he really didn't do anything about the current phase one trade deal. In fact, they didn't talk about it at all. If I suspect what he's doing is he's keeping that in his pocket. That doesn't mean he can't pull it out and start throwing more sanctions on but the market was expecting something like that and when it didn't get it the markets rallied hard um up literally 40 some odd 50 points and the dow was 300 points underwater and finished in the green uh when he didn't talk about that during his press conference today you know coming on around three o'clock or so and so it was really amazing how this thing really kind of panned itself out. So that's what I'm seeing right here in the markets, guys. Let's go take a look at the charts here. I want to go through these real quick because, as I said, I've got to move, and that's just a pain in the took us for me, but got to do what you got to do, right? So let me just switch the screen over. I want to show you guys a couple of key things that I'm looking at, our members are looking at, what I'm showing, what I'm talking to here. And as I move the screen over, um, I'm going to get a few things off my screen here as, as we do this wait for a minute for this to paint on there. WebEx seems to be a little bit slow. You can see with the FIB nodes off the March lows here, uh, we pulled above. This is the simple moving average, not an exponential. The exponential moving average was were much further above. This is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. You can see we busted through my target, which was sitting right around 30.22, 30.25. And it's kind of having a little bit of a hard time. But here, that last thrust today got us well up above it. So you can see the final zone here, the final frontier, if you're a Star Trek fan, takes us up to 
uh, 78.6% Fibno. Now, it's a, most people don't use the 78.6, but if you do extensions off the lows and you get through the 78.6, that means you're probably going to go all the way back up and hit the, the original highs of 33.97.50. These are the all-time highs, okay? The other thing to note on the Fib extensions off lows when you're in a, now this is just for bear markets, guys. When you're in a bear market and if you get over the 55 to 60% extension, then that the uh, not since in the 50s have we had a bear market when you get that far above the when you get over the 55 to 61.8 percent extension have we come back and made new lows so that does suggest that the new the lows that we're in on March 23rd when we came down to the uh, 2174 level all right you can see my system is calculating a potential Elliott wave four this is a this is a, an impulse move here in a, a three leg uh, coming up and that would suggest we're going to get a little bit of a pullback here the timing of it is a little bit suspect but we can run up to the 3135 level um, but again I would not be surprised to see a pullback you can see my system here is calculated a pullback using a combination again in Fibonacci uh, it's a wide range but this range tightens as we move forward in time the center of the range is around 2684 but I would not be surprised to see a pullback to the 61.8 fib node which is 2930 um, we got to get below the 200 EMA so that would be a natural pullback point short term uh, just to test the 200 because generally in a bear market the 50 and or the 200 become huge overhead resistance uh, foes kind of like lines in the sand and if markets can get up above that in a bear market and hold it that is good for the bulls now this even though it was a bear market that we were in it's a different kind of bear market it was it was induced all right it was not set by a, the natural economic forces this was induced by the government by shutting things down so that's why i believe the upside is going to be a little bit different than a typical bear market because the downside happened so fast fastest since the great depression in 29 that the upside is going to be a little bit different and i've got a lot of members telling me that they keep they want to see the markets go lower um, to jump back in. I get a lot of, you see the TV talking heads saying that the markets are going to go lower. I mean, they've been saying the market's going to go lower since we started to pan out here around the 50% Fib note extension, right? 50% of the move, um, um, of the entire distance of the move, they were expecting it to move back lower. And the markets never did. You can see it held the 38.2 FIB node right here, and then we came up to the 50% FIB node, and then we just danced around it for a while, but it kept holding. And then we moved up to the 61.8, and now we're moving up to the 78. So these folks that were just sitting on the sidelines watching this move up missed out on a great opportunity. All right, so you got to follow price action. You want to be the red stripe zebra. If you follow the herd, then you're going to be sitting on your haunches, uh, just watching the market action move up. And then when you finally jump in, you're going to miss most of the move. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't come back because clearly I do believe we're going to see some profit taken in a pullback uh, in a classic Elliott Wave 4 kind of pattern. And you can see some of my near term targets were hit right here in, in a. Uh, a little bit of a pullback here so now we're on this impulse move here but that does suggest we're going to pull back and then we're going to come up and make some new highs probably going in through the end of the year so this is what I'm looking at guys uh, everything seems to be uh, going according to plan right now I mean just the way the markets are running now I wanted to show you something else here also let me just get this on the screen and I'm going to get it up for you guys I've, I made an index a FANG index um, as I as I showed you guys before uh, and let me just get this up here for you. Uh, let me just switch over here. I got so many damn monitors on my screen. This is monitor number five. So let's get this up for you. What this is, is an index that I made that includes Microsoft in this, and then Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, Amazon. Um, and you can see here, if you look at this chart, uh, it's a daily chart. Um, the highs before going into the COVID-19 were at uh, 12,432, and then we just made new highs. So the only stocks in this um, customized index, as I said, is uh, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, and Amazon. All right, and you can see here we made brand new all-time highs on these fangs on May 21st, well south of the um, 
pandemic, post pandemic, right? Now we're getting a little bit of a pullback here. This is normal. We're getting some profit taking as we've seen some leadership shifts uh, into the cyclicals, industrials, and some of the financials, all right? That's normal, all right? If we look at XLF right here, um, you can see here where XLF on this daily chart, I mean, just it just really just came unglued here from the middle of May, uh, May right here. XLF was down around 20, and now we're up here around 23. Now that's a big move in this in this sector ETF. Moved up very strong. Okay, I mean, just a really good move. Um, <clears throat> And we're seeing some of this rotate in here like this. And then if we look at um, XLI, which is industrials, you can see the same thing with industrials. Boom, straight up like this. All right. So we're seeing some of this big movement here um, in some of these cyclicals that are that are just really moving nicely. Um, the other ones that have moved really nicely, too, um, we've got XLRE, which is real estate. Okay. You can see here that we started this move also the middle of May, and then boom, we've kind of come up here and we're kind of topping out a little bit. But you get the idea, right? So we're getting some of these guys really moving um, quite nicely. But the one that I wanted to show you here was the Russell Futures. The Russell Futures has moved very strong. It's outperformed. And as I told our members, there were a couple of ways to play this um, that really have worked out well. You can see we're still well below the um, – closing price of 2019 but the Russell has outperformed all the other indexes moving up off the 2020 lows that we made here at 948 we're at 1406 right now and the futures was right around 950 you know so we're up you know what four, 450 460 points uh, since March 23rd that's a lot for the rut um, and you can also see now this is an exponential moving average we're challenging it now if we can get above this exponential moving average for the 200 EMA, that would be a good thing. We, we poked our head above, we fell below, and then we're just trying to regain it. We did hold the 50 EMA. So if we can get up above that, that tells us we got a green light to continue to move and money is continuing to take on just a little bit more risk as we move forward in time. Okay. If we look at volatility, volatility also is coming down slowly but surely. Uh, but remember, once we went into um, the black zone, which I call the black swan zone, it's it's our zone five up here. In just these different colors, we use different option strategies based on where we're sitting. Right now, we're still elevated, even though it feels like we've come down dramatically and we don't get those lock limit moves every other day in the markets. We're still at a at a higher than normal volatility, guys. I mean, we closed the day at 27.51. Now, we're in a contango term structure, which is a good thing, all right? That means the VIX is lower than the front month vol futures. And then if we go to the back month, um, and if we look at the back month, which is July and August, you can see here we're still in a backwardation. We're still just barely in the red. So near term, we're okay with the term structure so far. But we go out through August and the markets are still spooked. So that means we're going to have a bid and volatility, which means vol is going to want to stay high and be very sensitive to downside movements where we'll get vol really jumping like a, you know, like a bean in a frying pan. If we do see any pullback, as I suggested on the E-mini futures, having that little Elliott Wave 4 pullback. Now, we're not going to make new lows, you know, short of any catastrophic event happening but just the way the charts are looking a little bit of a pullback here to me would make some sense and once it held and started moving back up i think you'll see even more bulls come in to make it uh, a little bit better right now if we come in here and look at the bond market you can see with the bond market we were up a full handle today keep in mind the feds are going to just let these they're going to continue to buy bonds have been nowhere it's like a great there are a couple of great option strategies to play on this when you've got bonds in a range and not a very big range, maybe four or five handles over a 30 to 40 day period. There are some ways to play that, you know, for our members, I'll go through it in, in, in one of our um, uh, weekly sessions here, but but it's just a really good uh, trade. We've been in and out of bonds and in and out of some of the ways to play interest rates. And I think there's going to be some more opportunities coming up, especially with the feds playing the reindeer games that they're playing. Okay. Now, if we come down and we look at currencies, the dollar is still the currency of choice. All right. 
you can see here we're still in this up up sloping um, uh, channel here this this uh, regression channel and you can see it comes all the way back uh, right here like this and just let me just keep I've got it on a daily chart here uh, but you can see it comes all the way back really to the uh, summer months of 2018 and we've had this right here when there was a rush and a flight to dollars during when the COVID hit and then the feds came in and did reverse repos and swaps with other countries by selling them dollars and they all took it and that brought the dollar back in but we're still within this <coughs> regression channel of the upside but notice we're close to breaking down okay if i were to just raise it out here let's just zoom in a little bit <coughs> You can see here on this regression channel, we're close to breaking. I think we're going to break it if the markets continue to go higher and we're going to come find this value area down here around 97.23. <coughs> and that means we're going to see a stronger euro because Europe just came out with a huge $2 trillion plus five-year spending stimulus plan. <coughs> Seven, uh, <coughs> excuse me, $750 billion in loans and grants. And then another 1.2 or 1.3 trillion in spending. <coughs> <coughs> Having to cause swallow my coffee the wrong way, guys. <coughs> but anyway, this is what we're looking at for currencies. Um, gold. Gold is up a little bit today, but as I told all our members, <coughs> we're in this range with gold now is not the time to pounce on it going long um, I think the pounce is going to be coming up um, <coughs> in about six months but I'll, I'll give you guys a clue when when to jump in on this there are other uh, metals that we're playing that are really working out very well for us we're up 30 or 40 percent of members I'll review it with you this Sunday night <coughs> Oils up in the month of um, uh, May over 77 percent. Remember, I got everybody long. I got our members long oil. There's a great way to play oil back over here. It's been a great trade for us. There's zero rate. I don't think we'll ever see that. Well, I don't want to say we won't ever see it again. We could. I mean, who thought we'd go below zero anyway? Um, but that just goes to show where we are with oil. And if the markets take off, it's going to be even stronger. OK, so and then there's some other things we're looking at at Nat Gas and a few others members. Um, I'm going to see you this Sunday night, assuming I get everything all hooked up and the Internet's all working. If you're not a member, I highly encourage you to come in. we got some great things going on with some of the trades that we're setting up. We've introduced a new trading system for our folks called Morpheus that I think you guys would really enjoy. Especially if you're a non-member, it'll help you out. It'll help you determine bias in the markets and help you day trade or help you swing trade or even position trade if that's what you're looking for. All right, everybody. Have a really great weekend. Members, I'll see you this Sunday night, I hope, at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care, folks. Ciao now.